So today I'll be talking about BWF World Championship 2022, which will take place in uh, probably slightly more than one week from today. And um, all the information that I have uh, that I'm going to present here is obtained from the um, BWF uh, World Championship uh, website. So you can take a look. Yeah. Right. So now, BWF World Championship 2022 is actually it's something like the uh, the World Cup of the FIFA World Cup of football. And this is actually, in fact, is the uh, highest, one of the highest tier um, rank uh, championship in terms of badminton, as you can see here. This is actually a great one, or rather the top tier BWF uh, tournament. And why players are so motivated to do well and to even to qualify to this is, is just because um, First of all, there is no monetary reward if you, even if you win uh, the championship. But it is more to the prestige and to the glory that you bring because you are representing your beloved nation. So that would be the, the first uh, motivation, which is the pride, right? To be a world champion. Now, other than that, um, you can see that the, uh, the points that you can gain from winning this uh, World Championship is actually the highest that uh, any BD BWF competition can uh, offer, right? In fact, it is even on par with the Olympic Games uh, at which the, for the badminton games, right? So those are the two primary motivation why every single player, badminton player, wants to, you know, do well in World Championship and Olympic Games because of the glory and two because of the points. Now, having if you can get this amount of huge amount of points just by participating in one competition, it can actually help to help you to uh, move up the ranking ladder much more quickly, right? And of course, when you when you have a higher ranking, then definitely you have the advantage of avoiding avoiding or to play other higher ranked players uh, in the early rounds of the next competitions. Alright, so needless to, I mean, let's cut down on the introduction and we move on to the draw. As you can see here, um, at the top half, right, the men's singles top half, we have uh, Victor Axelson, who is definitely one of the strong favourite to, to win this uh, World Championship. Now, of course, uh, we shouldn't uh, forget that uh, uh, Victor Axelson actually lost to the eventual champion from Singapore, Lo Ken Yu, and that is indeed a shocker. So that goes on to say that um, there's nothing certain in sports. So, But looking at Victor's current unstoppable form, as you can see that his winning streak is like 30 over uh, wins in a row, it will be really a tough nut for, for any uh, player to crack, right? So, but anyway, um, his first match will be against uh, a veteran from Malaysia, Lou Darren. Um, now, I, I wouldn't say that this match is 100% win for Victor Axelson because uh, Lou Darren, uh, from time to time, can actually spring some really big surprise, especially in the earlier rounds of the uh, tournament because uh, given his age factor and all that um, as he progressed deeper you notice that his performance tends to drop but uh, with his experience with his um, skillful plays i'm not surprised if he can actually push uh, with Axelson to a rubber game yeah and the uh, second match would be between jason tay the talented uh, youngster from singapore against mark kerju um, by the way, um, I would pick uh, Victor to, to win this one. Um, the next match between Jason Tay and Mark, this is uh, quite mysterious, um, but I probably would go for Mark simply because he is a much more physical player yeah, and, and more experienced as well. And the next match between Kan, Kan Tasuniyama and uh, Sitikon Tamasin, this is a, this could be a close contest, but I think the seeded player would have the upper edge. 
and um, another mouth-watering clash between uh, Chico Dui Wanoyo, the Malaysian Masters Champion recently, up against the Commonwealth uh, Silver Medalist Ng Ziyong, another up-and-coming up uh, youngster from Malaysia. This is definitely a, a very, very interesting match to, to, to look out for. Um, but I would still think that uh, Chico might have the slight edge, um, but you never know. So assuming uh, that uh, Victor Sumiyama, um, Kanta, and Mark and um, Chico all at once, I would think that Victor is a strong candidate, a strong favorite to, to make it to the quarterfinals. Yeah. And then we move on to Anthony Ginting, uh, who has been in sizzling form, having uh, won the recent um, Singapore Masters. Um, I think he has been two and a half year or so, which uh, he has uh, not won any uh, title. So definitely Ginting is the hot favorite. And uh, next match between the Mauritian player and Mexico, um, this would I'm not too sure because I have not watched any of them play. Um, and then we move on to Rasmus Genke against the Finnish. I would think that Rasmus would be the strong favourite. Now another uh, interesting match would be between uh, Shiyuchi who has recently... I think this is the first match that he will be coming back to play after for being suspended for I think one year or so. So it would be really interesting to see how far uh, Shiyuchi can go. But barring any upset, I would think that the uh, round three would be a clash between Anthony Ginting and Shiyuchi. And if that happens, I think Anthony Ginting would be up against Victor Axelsen again. Now, if you have been following the recent tournaments, uh, and the again thing has been facing Victor Axelsen for quite some time, for quite a few times, but he has not been able to break uh, Victor Axelsen's uh, uh, winning streak. So, interesting to see, but Victor would still definitely be the super hot favorite to qualify into the semi final in the top half. And then we have uh, Chou Tianchen uh, against Sai Pani. I think Chou Tianchen shouldn't be a problem for him to advance. However, Shu and Jason Anthony Ho, I, I would think that the Canadian may have a slight edge. Lee Chok Yu against the New Zealander, I think Lee Chok Yu would be the favorite. Jean Luda against Misha Zilberman. Uh, I might think that the Israeli player may have an uh, advantage here. But assuming that uh, nothing goes um, terribly wrong, it would be uh, Cho Tian Chen against Li Chong Yu. And if that clash happens, I think that Li Chong Yu, if if I recall correctly, has beaten Cho Tian Chen recently, so I believe the Hong Ki might be able to upset uh, Cho Tian Chen again. And then we move on to John, Jonathan Christie against uh, Tama Junior Popov. Uh, definitely Christie would be the heavy uh, favorite. Um, Kantafon uh, against Kai Shaka, I think it would be Kantafon. Wang Zue against uh, Nguyen Tian Min. Uh, I'm really impressed by this uh, veteran uh, from Vietnam who is actually in the same era as uh, Lee Chong Wei and yet he is still playing but I think uh, the youngster from Taiwan might be, Chinese Taipei might be able to win and uh, Lu Guangzhou and Toby Penty it would be a tough task uh, it would be a tough ask for Toby Penty to upset the form book so I think the Chinese would advance. Now, assuming that all of this is going as uh, expected, uh, I don't see a reason why Jonathan Christie is not the strong favorite to make it to the semi final. So, that would be uh, my prediction. It would be a victor, Axelson, against Jonathan Christie. 
in the semi-final at the top half. Moving to the bottom half, we have Wong Wing Ki, I believe he's a senior player, a veteran player from Hong Kong against a relatively younger player from Belgium. And I think this player has shown some potential, so I'm going for the Belgian. Hugh Kong Hee against uh, Angus Ng Ka Long, uh, rather very difficult to predict, but I might be going uh, with the Korean, Hugh Kong Hee. Nilka Kanuratne from uh, Karuna Ratne from Sri Lanka against the Kevin Corden. Uh, my obvious pick would be Kevin Corden from Guatemala. Pablo Abian against No Ken Yu. I think the uh, defending world champion would be this, the, the favorite, despite his uh, recent uh, dip in form. But he shouldn't be having much of a problem to beat uh, Pablo Abian, who is also a very senior player from Spain. Jordan Araka against a uh, player from Ukraine. Kodai Naro Oka for sure, another up and coming and very exciting uh, young young player from Japan. I think he has made into two finals if I'm not wrong this year. Tomi Sugiato against uh, Widisan, uh, Widisan for sure. We have KB, we have uh, Kodai Naro Oka, we have Ken Yu. And then uh, between uh, Felix Burestet against uh, the Egyptian player, I would favor the Swedish. And finally, uh, Ant Anderson Donson against Kentani Shimoto. It will be interesting to see Anderson, what is his current form, because he has been absent from tournaments for quite some time. But barring any upset, AA should be able to pull it through. So. Going by these clashes, if everything goes as expected, uh, the match between uh, Kevin, Kevin Corden and Julian Karagi, I may actually favor Kevin Corden. And uh, between Kipno Kane Yu, oh, sorry. So this is actually uh, between Julian Karagi and uh, Hyo Kwang Hui. Difficult, really difficult. I think the Korean would have the advantage here against um, Kevin Corden and Ken Yu. Definitely low Ken Yu. Kodai Naraoka against Kunlawu Bitisan. I'm going with the Thai lad. Yes, uh, simply because he's, he's a much more balanced player good in attacking and also equally good in uh, defending. Whereas Kwada Naraka is more of a defensive and uh, counter-attacking kind of a player. And uh, the match between Anderson Thompson against uh, Felix Burestet uh, should be AA. Now if it all goes to like this, um, no can you against Hyo Kwang Wee? Definitely can you. AA and Kunla would be this one. Another interesting matchup. Uh, I'm going for AA. And if this really happens, uh, this is actually a repeat of uh, last year's uh, semi final clash between these two, in which uh, Lo Ken Yu actually prevailed. Uh, but this time around, I think that um, based on the current form, Anders Antonsen might have the upper hand against uh, Logan Yu. So this would be the third semi-finalist uh, based on my uh, prediction. Sao Jun Peng against uh, Opeori from Nigeria, definitely the Chinese player. Um, and against the winner of uh, Kidambi, Sri Kan Kidambi against uh, Nat Nguyen. Sri Khan should, should be able to progress. And the uh, next match between Bernardo Atilano against Max Viskichen from Germany. I would favor the uh, Germany uh, player. And then uh, Bryce Lovares against Dizija. It should be a match that 
it is for decision to lose right so and um, next would be Daniel Nikolov from Bulgaria against uh, Luis Penalva maybe the Spanish might have the upper edge Hans Christian Victorius against Lakshan Sen for sure the Commonwealth gold medalist would be the hot favorite to take this one um, Luca Rabe against Pranoy Pranoy would be my pick Kento Momota against Lino Munoz from Mexico Kento Momota now if all goes to plan we should be seeing a clash between uh, Kuidam Srikan and El Dezija and um, this could be really interesting but I'm favoring Dizija to progress. Um, and finally, for the uh, the bottom uh, most would be Laksha Sen against Kento Momota. Kento Momota, yeah. So if this happens, then uh, I think we would be able to see. Laksha Sen moving into the semi final yet again. So, this would be my uh, prediction for men's singles. So, just to recap, uh, the top half would be Victor, Axelson, Anthony Ginting, um, Lee Chok Yu against Joe Nathan Christie. So, which means that Joe Nathan Christie should be able to advance. So, we have Victor, we have Jonathan Christie, we have Anderson Thompson. This would be a cracker, but I am going for Li Zhi So that would be it uh, for my prediction of the men's singles. Uh, if, you, if you have a different opinion, uh, please comment and um, I will reply to your comment shortly. Thank you.